Good morning. It is, I wanted to say it's Monday, but no, yesterday was Independence Day, so today is Tuesday. It's Tuesday morning, and it's supposed to be 101 here today in Missouri, so I have kids already in the pool. Lydia's in her swimming suit, already been in the pool, and it's not even like breakfast time yet. We are cooking out on our Blackstone today. We're going to cook our pancakes out here, and I thought... In light of my announcement yesterday about having our 10th baby, I thought it would be fun today to show you how do we make it work, this little house behind me. Um, how do we make it work? How do we fit all of us in the house and do all of the things that a family does? Eat and sleep and do laundry and all of those things. Lift you up. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk you around. I'm going to show you different areas, how they function, um, organization. But first, I'm going to make some pancakes. So we have this awesome outdoor pavilion here that I can cook on and serve breakfast right there. And here's our pool, and the kids got so sunburned Mommy. yesterday, so we put the canopy over it. <laughs> now they can swim without being sunburned. This is the side of our future house right here. This is the ground that's being prepared, the rock that's going to be spread to be able to put the concrete foundation down. Um, that will be right here in the front of the house, but for now it makes a great pool spot. It's level. You need to be dried off. I can't believe how hot it is already. I was just, <laughs> came in in a sweat from making those pancakes, but it feels great in here. Jason has air conditioning units installed in every room, and he hung these really neat fans throughout the house. I don't know if you can see, there's one back there. Got them from Amazon, and they are fantastic. And it's just, having that air moves around helps so much. Um, okay, so, our house is divided into three main sections right here in this area. This is, the kitchen, there is a fly strip up there, folks. Don't mind, but this is a, a real life farmhouse. And I keep waiting for Joanna Gaines to invent like a cute fly strip kind of thing, but she hasn't yet. This is our kitchen area. This is a functioning kitchen, guys. So we're not all about just like cute and impractical. This is a functioning farmhouse kitchen. We have, um, I have a bucket that I have brought in right now with some berries. They're spelt berries, like wheat berries that I was grinding. That needs to go back out to my food storage. Bag of potatoes we just harvested. In here I have just pantries that are full of all of our inside storage. I have videos for all of this that I can show you. But it's, it's, it's very, it works very well for us. I've pared it down to just what we need. So our Instant Pot is up there. Um, this is a milking pails and pans and the pressure cooker up on the top. We have a full-size refrigerator. That's a question that I get asked a lot. Yes, we do have a full-size refrigerator. And then um, we're in constant flux of dirty dishes, washing dishes, all the things. I actually got rid of my dishwasher because we have really hard water out here and I just got sick of the dishwashers breaking. So I was like, you know what? It's not that bad to just hand wash your dishes. If you do it quickly, um, it's really not that big of a deal. And so that's what we've done for quite a while now. Um, so I just keep a dish rack there. I got that one at Walmart. Usually it's full of dishes drying, but Silas just came and put them away. That's his morning job, so that's empty. And then up on our shelves, it's just very practical. We have our dishes on our shelves, which makes it so easy to put things away and of course also to find what you're looking for. I really like this drawer that I have under the sink because it takes a useless space and turns it into something that is very helpful. Oh, the second section is this dining room section, living room section. When we first moved here, we had these two flip-flopped because I thought the dining room needed to be right next to the kitchen, and I suppose, I suppose that's true. However, once we switched the two, we couldn't believe how much better the house flowed. It just feels more spacious in here. And so it, it works fine. We use the table for eating, for schoolwork, for crafts, for all of those kind of things. Um, we have a couch plus a little ottoman um, that actually Jason constructed. This couch set was um, grandma and grandpa's. They gave it to us and it came with 
a matching love seat, but because the armrests are so bulky, it just didn't fit well in here. So he instead built this like ottoman type thing that we use as a couch. So it works well. I've got diapers under there, violin cases. The kids really enjoy music, so you'll notice music everywhere. Again, we put in here the things that are important to us. So books and musical instruments are probably the biggest priority. So you can see we have shelves on all the walls and this holds homeschooling things, books that we're reading, uh, Bibles, basket of headphones, all of these kind of things that we use regularly are here. This is a basket that I hung up here because um, we use it for gathering things from the garden so that way it's just easy to grab and go. This is our current uh, reward system for the middle and younger kids. I can talk about that in another video, but it flows very well. When we want more room at our table, because benches help because you can um, fit a lot more people on them, but when we want more room, we just pull it out. And we have a stool back there that serves as another seat on the other end. And so you can fit another person down there. Underneath the table is where the um, vacuum goes, the robot vacuum that keeps the floors clean. Thanks to Leo. He just replaced all of the... Well. Um, I can't see you because that light. Leo just replaced all of the brushes and the whatever they are. Yeah. Brushes, right? Yeah, what brushes, filter. filter. Filter, that's the other thing. And yeah. So now it's doing a really awesome job. He even has it hooked up to my phone, which I think is incredible. So I can just tell my phone to run the vacuum. This is the life. Okay, then over here in this area, this is the toy shelf. So we, the kids, of course, have their own personal toys in their beds. They have shelves in their beds, but this is just community toys, card games, basket of some more books, and our morning checklist and school checklist, which I have revised. Some of you are probably like, what? That doesn't look the same. I've made it fancier, and I'll share about that a little later, but um, we also store some water bottles here, and it can serve as a bench. If you clear the top off when we are having a lot of people, that's extra seating right there. in this space the first couple years it just didn't function well it was the same space but it just didn't fit as many things and they didn't stay organized this area was just a mess whereas now that I have custom designed this shelving space to exactly what I need it works so well and I think that this space just really sums up the whole reason that a tiny house can work for a large family or any small space can work for a lot of people. It's all about paring down to what you need and then organizing those things so that they're easy to find and you can um, put them away when you're done with them. And that's what has happened here. So this area, since I have completed I these shelves, toy. what do you want, sis? Your toys, this is her little toy box. So since I have completed this area, um, everything, has stayed organized since then. And to me, that is a sign of something that's working. If you have a spot that you've organized and it's not staying organized, I recommend taking everything away. That's what I did here. I took everything away until it was completely blank. I had Jason build me these shelves and painted them the same color. And then I analyzed everything. I put all of the um, things in piles that I wanted. I counted out how many containers I would need for things. And I put it all back exactly how I needed and it has worked since then which is a sign that the system was exactly what I needed so on the other side of the room we have Benjamin's baby crib <laughs> and he's showing you how it works so this is actually an Ikea crib 
that we just chopped the legs off <laughs> and it fit perfectly in that space. You doing peekaboo with James? <laughs> also, the same theme downstairs. We have books everywhere. It's just how our family is. We just love books, so they're just piled in every nook and cranny. <laughs> There's a big kid climbing in a baby bed. These kids finally took a break from swimming, so they're filling the house now. Yes. Our bathroom is small, but it comfortably fits a full-size clawfoot bathtub with a shower, toilet, pedestal sink. This little basket on the wall keeps soap, the soap dispenser and a few extra towels handy. We have multiple hooks on the back of the door to be able to dry bath towels and actually another one over the toilet. Behind the door is a shelf that functions like our bathroom closet. So each tote is organized to make things easy to find. And the two pretty baskets contain the extra toilet paper and fresh hand towels and washcloths. Inside the kids' toothbrush box are individual zipper bags for each child containing their toothbrush, flossers, and toothpaste. If you are interested in any of these products I'm sharing, I have most of them on my Amazon storefront and you can find the link to that in the description box below this video. Hanging on the wall just outside the bathroom is the checklist that I mentioned earlier. I actually drew this checklist by hand and then I just put it inside a picture frame. So you can write on it with dry erase marker and erase it really easily. Each morning they have to complete the top half of this list and then on school days they also complete the bottom half. Underneath our Jacob's Ladder staircase, each family member has their own hook for coats and jackets and beneath that this little drawer set holds winter gloves and hats for kids. And then the big wooden box has laptop computers and cords, and that second box has paper. At the end of the hallway is a big box with all the farm boots, and then it's our shelf containing all of our games. We also used a piece of cattle panel and some clips to create this space for displaying kids' artwork. The kids' room is an extra tall room. We always laugh because we have no idea why the original creator of this building would make a room that tall when it's just for a workshop space. But for whatever reason he did and it serves us well because we can fit two sets of triple bunk beds and each bed is large enough for even an adult to sit inside comfortably. Each child also has their own set of shelves for all of their treasures. And then every bed has a curtain so that at night you can just pull the curtains closed. The older ones can read while the younger ones are able to sleep without being disturbed. Now, if you would like to tour our laundry room and family closet, which are just around the corner, then check out this video. It will take you on a detailed walkthrough. Thanks so much for touring our space with us. Do you have a favorite area? If you do, share it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.